thank you for the uh, previous two, two, speaker, uh, two speakers. Um, this time, the, uh, I'd like to talk about in more detail uh, in terms of technology and the uh, applications of these technologies to the real world so now in happening in Korea. Um, also, thank you very much for Excellence Joa Lee, the previous speaker, and also Mr. Yves Dubois. Thank you very much for your speakers. And as the, the uh, uh, already said, the, uh, <clears throat> I'm Gu Cha Gyun, uh, the CEO and chairman uh, of LSIS Korea. And also, it's my great pleasure to have this opportunity to make a statement at this very important uh, opening plenary of the 10th Asia Clean Energy Forum. A uh, few of us gathered here uh, might have doubts that the rapidly developing countries uh, in Asia have led global economic growth during the past few decades and have become the main growth engine uh, of the world economy. Rapid economic growth in Asia is expected to continue in the future, contributing to over 70% of global GDP growth. Accompanying economic development, the industrialization and urbanization is expected to accelerate in the region. In Asia, the urban population will increase by 44 million every year, and the demand for energy will more than double by 2030. According to a recent report released by ADB, 8. trillion US dollars of investment is needed for building infrastructure in Asia from 2010 to 2020. Almost half of the total, so approximately 4 trillion US dollars, are to be invested in the energy sector. The Asia is at a critical juncture at the moment to ensure sustainable growth for the region in the long run. Especially in the electricity sector, I believe managing peak load demand is critical. Of course, the way to meet peak demand is, at, is add more power generation plants and improve energy efficiency. In this regard, uh, we need to reduce CO2 emissions and use diversified sources of energy by building eco-friendly infrastructure. And in addition to introducing energy efficiency enhancing technologies, thereby enabling efficient peak load management. Everyone realizes by now, a smart grid makes all possible. Smart grid incorporates renewable energy, ESS, which is the energy storage system, and also known as EES, electric storage, uh, electric energy storage, and other energy uh, efficient solutions to the existing grid system, and optimizes energy use through effective demand response. Okay, from, let me explain about the smart grid concept and the energy efficient solutions involved by introducing a few cases that are actually in use today in Korea. Uh, recently, uh, distributed energy resources have become increasingly popular. Use of renewable energies, such as uh, photovoltaic, small hydropower, and wind turbines are becoming widely accepted and introduced as they reduce CO2 emissions. The importance of renewable sources is increasingly uh, being recognized throughout the world. And it is expected to account for 
up to one quarter of global power mix by 2030. Amongst the various alternatives that I would like to focus on the water floating photovoltaic system in Korea. The floating PV systems enable a greater electric generation efficiency, actually by more than 10%, compared to our general PV systems installed on the ground, as the surrounding water cools down the system. As such, it has a higher return on investment and a shorter payback period. In addition, it has huge advantages in environmental conservation by minimizing land use, therefore conserving forest and farmland and minimizing disruption of the underwater ecosystem. You can see the photo, and these are the photos of floating PV systems which are currently used in the oceans, lakes, and reservoirs of Korea. However, output of these renewable energy systems tend to fluctuate by its nature. In order to cope with this potential problem associated with renewable energy systems, we can use ESS to stabilize output of the grid and protect the overall grid. Moreover, ESS can enable power plants to generate at their maximum capacity through frequency regulation. And another key function of ESS is peak shaving on the demand side. ESS stores electricity when demand for it is low and supplies electricity back to the system during peak period. And I'd like to talk about uh, to you uh, a technology that improves the transmission efficiency. It's called HVDC, which stands for High Voltage Direct Current, which is regarded as the essence of power transmission technology. When transmitting over long distances or underwater, it's more efficient and economical to use HVDC rather than AC. So for now, DC transmission is more economical than AC transmission for only distances over 400 kilometers, but this is changing as the technology evolves. So normally, HVDC transmission losses are only 3% per 1,000 kilometers, why AC, AC transmission losses are 7%. HVDC cannot only transfer power by connecting two separate existing networks, but also prevent a major power system collapse from spreading to other networks. Now let's take a look at the technologies on the demand side, the EMS which stands for Energy Management System, then can be uh, implemented in many different ways according to the, the particular characteristics of different types of customers, such as factories, buildings, and even homes. The basic concept of EMS is quite simple. Renewable energy, ESS, and integrated with IT to maximize energy efficiency, and all energy management systems share this basic concept. When we apply this one to a factory, it's called FAMS, Factory Energy Management System. And FAMS is an energy optimization solution that provides the self-diagnosis on wasted energy so, and suggest improvements and monitors the system on the real-time basis. Okay, this slide over here uh, demonstrates an actual FAMS installed 
in our Chengju factory of my company, LSIS. This plant was selected as a smart factory by Korean government earlier this year. The factory makes use of solar, ESS, and various other energy efficient equipment, and also optimizes use of various, uh, various energy sources, and such as electric uh, power, gas, heat, and water. It also enhances stability of the equipment and facilities by making use of real-time monitoring. The total investment amount was 6.7 million US dollars. However, it saves approximately 50% of the energy consumption, leading to cost savings approximately 0.8 million US dollars per year. The investment is expected to pay itself in about seven years. Next, let me introduce BAMS, so Building Energy Management System. This uh, picture. Uh, this one is this technology applicable to buildings. For buildings, it is more important to apply smart building technologies using various sensors for controlling HVAC, lighting, securities, and etc. Recently, my company LSIS applied BAMS to our new R&D center in Korea. Constructing a smart building was sought after by applying rooftop PV with ESS, actually the one megawatt ESS, and various smart grid technologies. For this building, a total of 2.2 billion US dollars was invested in the process, but energy efficiency was improved by 9%. The next example that you see here is HAMS, Home Energy Management System. HAMS technology is where the customers will directly come in contact and experience smart grid technology. The impact is expected to be huge. Actually, the, my own house is a living lab for this HAMS technology. With an application on my smartphone, I can monitor the current energy consumption level and energy savings anytime, anywhere on the real-time basis. It is possible to change the various settings of the photovoltaic and energy storage system according to the different needs and environment. To make all these smart grid solutions more effective, we need to introduce demand response. Demand response motivates customers to voluntarily reduce their energy consumption during a certain time of the day. Then the government either provide incentives for the amount of electricity saved or provide discounts on the electricity bill. Last November, the Korean government opened the megawatt market where the customers can sell electricity that they saved to the electricity whole market. So which is the combination of the negative and watt, so megawatt. Since megawatt decreases the quantity of electricity demanded, the total amount of power generation can be reduced. For now, there are 1,000 large business and commercial customers that are participating in the megawatt market with a market capacity of two gigawatts. I would also like to introduce microgrid. So microgrid is an independent grid which can operate either connected to the AC grid or 
autonomously in the isolated islands and mountain ranges. Most isolated islands currently use diesel or gas generators. Not only is it expensive to operate, but also has adverse effects on the environment. To minimize the use of diesel or gas, more renewable energy sources are being installed in those locations. In addition, the use of microgrid helps reduce energy losses in the transmission and distribution stages, further increasing efficiency of the overall electricity delivery system. Recently, the Korea government announced a plan uh, to set up autonomous microgrid in 62 islands. Uh, this project will be conducted as a project financing from private companies. The CAPCO, the uh, Korea Electric Power Corporation, and also Korea's Seoul, the electric power utility company, uh, will con con conclude power purchase agreements with private sector companies for the next 20 years. Implementing the microgrid in combination with ESS is expected to reduce CO2 emission, improve cost savings, and enhance operation efficiency. I also would like to introduce an ongoing microgrid project, uh, project by my company, LSIS. Island, Island D in Korea is a home to approximately 1,700 people. We are trying to enable an energy self-sufficient island, minimizing the use of diesel generators. The initial investment is expected at 16 million US dollars, an average annual benefit is 1.8 million US dollars per year. Solar and wind power generation, along with ESS, will be installed to replace the diesel generators, and EMS will be applied for energy efficiency and security purposes. There are many islands in the Asia Pacific, including the Philippines, which can benefit. A microgrid is a, a brilliant solution to optimize the utilization of renewables and reduce fossil fuel use. Now, I would like to add a little more about the business perspective on how we can exploit a smart grid business opportunities to in, in developing membership countries. Due to economic development and population growth, Asia's demand for electric power is increasing, where investment on developing bulk generation and transmission facilities cannot keep up with. Thus, uh, leading a, a lack of reserves in Asia. In other words, the gap between supply and demand in energy is widening. Business opportunities that could first be applied in Asia would be project using energy storage and by utilizing them. Microgrid can be and will be the solution for highlands and islands where it is difficult to supply electricity using the existing grid. I believe that uh, we are now at a stage where a paradigm shift is possible from a large scale grid system with bulk generation and transmission capacities to a small scale micro grid systems with distributed energy resources. Technological advancement let us skip the establishment and use of wire-based system and led us directly to the world of wireless network. 
In the same way, considering the continuously evolving technology, I believe it would be more plausible to adopt policies forcing favoring microgrid rather than building up bulk generation and transmission facilities for the uh, countries where electricity access is lower than 50%. And ladies and gentlemen, and there is no doubt that our lovely planet Earth has to become smarter and greener. This does not happen overnight. There are many challenges to overcome. The challenges connected to introducing smart grid can be addressed through appropriate policies, regulatory actions, and business initiatives. And these need to be brought together through public and private collaboration. Today, I wanted to share with all of you here that the advancement uh, in technology is turning our dreams into reality. I sincerely hope all of you gathered here today, whether you are from government, NGO, utility, or even private sector, will share this uh, vision of a smarter, a greener planet. Cooperation will bring us one step to realizing that vision. Finally, I'd like to thank, again, the ADB for bringing so many stakeholders together to discuss this important topic today. Thank you very much. Thank you.